Mm -mm, error message. Oh, we're live. <laughs> so, hello, welcome to episode 38, I think it is. That's what I put down, so it better be. So, yeah, episode... let's, let's run with that. <laughs> episode 38. I am Chris, and once again, I'm joined by Mark. Sorry, I've just look, got two wireless masters on the go for two different machines, and I keep picking the wrong one up, so I keep having to look. So that explains, if I stop for a pause, that's because I'm trying to pick up the right mouse. Um, so we weren't here last week. You had uh, Dom, Craig, and Kurt. They were in. They were at IFA, so they did a special. Uh, the week before, which is when I said there would be an IFA special, we kind of got sidetracked and didn't get round to making it. They made so they made it afterwards. So we are back to normal now. Um, Don would be here, but he has is having problems with his jaw locking up, which. I've had happen a couple of times, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy unless they were speaking too much. So he's away this week, and he says he'd be away next week as well. Um, yes, he's essentially under medical orders to try not to talk. <laughs> yeah, not to talk too too much. So there's no dumb. I we did try. We we moved it to today, what which is Wednesday. Uh, we did try and move. We moved it to today because we were trying to get Craig on. Because, as many of you know, Craig kind of n did a couple, then didn't yeah, do Craig any. Has been absent for for some time. Some time. So I thought it'd be nice to get Craig back, and then he then. So, so we organised it last week, and he then finds out he's got a meeting at a hotel, so he can't be here tonight. We did try getting hold of Kurt, but Kurt seems to have gone quiet for a little bit, which is not a problem. You just get me and Mark again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I don't I think that's it for, as far as the checking goes. I don't know if Mark's got anything. Nope. Nope, I didn't think so. So, since we've been away for, well, basically two weeks, um, some of these might come across as being a bit old, uh, but we're going to cover them anyway. Yeah, and some of them just might feel really old. Yeah, like the iPhone yes, 7 launch. Yes, that feels yes. really old. <laughs> yes, yes, which was the first thing we were going to go into. Yes, Apple made a new phone. Um, yeah. Yeah, so they've released, so as usual, they've done a regular iPhone and the Plus. Well, they did that last year with the 6S and the 6S Plus. Well, the six, that'll be two years now, won't it? Six plus, six plus, six S plus. So, yep, yeah, this is the third time they've made two phones and released them at the set, same time ish. Um, the one thing everyone's going to notice for is no headphone jack. So, we were speculating that there would be no headphone jack. And yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it has been the the rumor um, in Apple's quest to be as user hostile as they possibly can be, <laughs> and still have their their idiot uh, cult members by them. Yep. And so they decided that the the headphone jack, which has been a global standard on ooh, every every phone Minus available on the market, the couple um, of Chinese phones. Yeah, the but. Motos. Well, they yes, but I mean, this thing, the, the, the jack that has been around since, I think, 1897, they saw listed, um, Apple has decided that they are going to retire it, and the reason behind Apple's decision to do so is apparently courage, which apparently, if you're um, running Apple, that's a reason to do something, courage. Uh, the female headphone jack was invented in the 19th century. So, uh, yes, it's been around for some time. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, more than 100 years old, and basically nobody since then has actually come up with a better connector that actually does the same job, but does it in a better fashion. Apple decided that it wasn't going to try making the, the thing better. It was just 
trying to make you buy more stuff, which I suppose from their perspective is better for them. The other, the other thing that they did that I've, I've liked is they've scrapped the 16 gigabyte models. So you now buy, you're only up to 32, 128, and 256, mm. which if you look at the prices, I'm going to pick the iPhone 7 Plus is uh, for 256 gigabyte model is 919 pounds. Mm. Who spends nearly compute? Well, it is compute like desktop it's not, money. It's not just computer money. It's it's desktop money. It's not even that it's desktop money. I mean, it's you could buy two or three like cheap laptops for that. Yeah. I mean, granted, they wouldn't be the world's best laptops, but you could buy actually really good laptops. I mean, this is more expensive than than like buying a MacBook. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's going to be some diehard fans that are going to drop that on it, or they're going to take it through a contract because that's what people do with iPhones because it's too stupid. Um, if you go to the link, which is our link that Craig wrote. Yes, um, although Apple did also, um, they have started doing something which is going to shaft most of the carriers and they're going to be pissed, um, is Apple will essentially run its own uh, um, higher purchase or, as far as I understand it, and I really haven't looked because basically if Apple went tits up tomorrow, I couldn't care less. Um, <laughs> the Running it similar to like a car leasing agreement. You you uh, don't own the phone. You essentially rent it uh, for a year, um, and then when the new one comes around next year, you can uh, you know hand it back and uh, rent the new one. So yeah, this has been that one's been out for some time. Yeah, I mean a great revenue stream for them, um, I guess, but I can't see the carriers being super chuffed. Oh no, because they can't sell them on a the contract then. Well, exactly. I mean, it's it's cutting them out. Um, um, so the other thing I did want to say is that they are now IP67 certified as well. Yeah. Which is a first for an Apple product, to my knowledge. My, Apple Watch I think may, so. I the think Apple so. Watch may be some sort. Well, I think it oh, is. Oh, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a watch, so it's, you kind of expect it. Yeah, yeah. If you can't splash a watch, you know, whilst washing your hands, you know, the what the yeah, that's a design flaw. Yeah. So they've done a couple of things like they brought a new watch and they brought some new headphones, which with well, AirPods. Yeah. They're basically Bluetooth earbuds. That's something else we're gonna get to in a minute. Yeah. And, and basically, having not heard them, um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say if anyone pays $160 for those things, that's a bit I was just going to get to. Because $160, that will buy you some actually pretty decent stuff if you know what to look for. Yeah, so the AirPods, as Mark just touched that. So I've put a link to the Amazon, uh, no, not Amazon, the Apple Apple UK site. Just to put it in perspective, these are £159. And they look like, if you know, the Oral B toothbrushes, the electric ones. Well, I the, the, the jokes that I've seen running around is that they look like hair dryers. Yes. Like, like old fashioned hair dryers. Yes, kind of. Um, and I'm sure they sound as, just as good. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> um, the bit that I did also, I forgot to mention about the iPhone, is when you get it, it comes with the Lightning earbuds and the Lightning to three and a half mil headphone jack adapter. And that, yes, that's all it comes with. Yeah. And the typical five watt USB charger, lightning cable, but no, that's something I also quickly wanted to mention. But no, the AirPods, why they call them AirPods? Fuck I, knows. Uh, same reason, call them I, iPods same reason I'm thinking because they call them magical. It's like, no, no, it's not magical. It's called science. Right? It's also Bluetooth. That, that's how they work. Yes. Uh, this is not magical. Like, no, a unicorn. Unicorns are magical, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, so these have come out. They're, they're not out yet. It's not obviously they won't be available until October. They say on the website late October, which is funny enough when I believe the iPhones come out. Um, I, I don't know what to think of them. The, the one thing I do like though is the carrying case, well, charging case. Mm. Not only does it charge them, it also houses them, which I thought was kind of nice. And then you look at the price and go, yes, I would expect this. I mean, they've got to be something good to be worth one hundred and fifty nine pounds. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they are worth one hundred and fifty nine pounds. I mean, I, I haven't heard them. I haven't heard them, so I cannot absolutely categorically say that they sound terrible. I'm sure they don't sound terrible in comparison to the, you know, fifty p jobs that used to come in the box. I'm sure they sound better than those. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the ones that come in the box now with the lightning adapter this is going to be like 19 pounds or 20 quid the 20 oh right here it is they're 29 pounds yeah i i've not seen the adapter on the website so i couldn't say how much that was but if it was me i'd definitely be switching to bluetooth headphones i would not trust myself with a Pinky little yes, doctor. yes. Uh, a friend of mine who is somewhat of an Apple fan, um, he has already bought a uh, pair of uh, Momentum on-ear wireless. And may I just point out, because um, I, as I pointed out to him, uh, if you're looking for things like um, expensive Sennheisers on Amazon, do yourself a favour. Check the UK site. Check the German site. The French site and the Spanish site. He bought them um, for a hundred pounds less on the Spanish site and he got next day delivery. They did come the next day and they came from the warehouse in Dunfermline which is about 15-20 miles that way. <laughs> so yeah just by ordering them in Spanish which by the way Chrome will happily translate for you yeah, he, he saved a hundred pounds. I mean, the um, these which I'll get into later, they're basically LG tone knockoffs. But I've been using these and I've been back to college since Tuesday. So, what's that? Yesterday, yeah, yesterday. So, I've used them yes, yesterday and today. And in all fairness, if I was told, right, no three and a half mil headphone, these is what I'd go to which I kind of like because they they sit on your neck because the problem I have with Bluetooth earbuds is when you're sitting in class, you only tend to have one earbud in. And mm. as soon as you take sit there with one earbud in, all the weight off the other one just pulls. So you feel the cables moving around on your neck. The fact these are in a band, you just pull them out and then... I don't want to do it. I can't find a button now. Where's the button? That's the charging port. And you just, which I don't know if, how well that showed, but they go in really quick. And I've, I've about ripped my ear to pieces several times, just pressing it. Well, I put it out too long. I've had them actually come out my ear. I've had the wire whip me around the ear. Um, but they would what I'd go to because. They isolate well. Most earbuds I've used that are Bluetooth, they don't have good isolation. So everyone around you complains that they can hear. I had that on half volume with both earbuds in and nobody could hear. So if you do get an iPhone 7, get these to go with them. Don't buy the AirPods. Because well, my suggestion would be um, Me Electronics or Me Audio, as they've renamed themselves. Um, they're X7 Pros. Um, they go for around $100. That would be, if you want in-ear Bluetooth, those are pretty good. Um, there is, of course, a vast array of much cheaper ones because um, most Bluetooth earphones kind of... They, they tend towards the cheaper end of the market rather than the high end. I think these were only about £20 anyway. Um, 
Craig got them for review and I've kind of ended up with them. So that is on my review list. I think that's actually number one. That's what I've got to review first. Uh, so expect an unaudio file review. So, and how, how should I put this? An average user review. Just because we're randomly speaking about Bluetooth headphones, there's a pair of things like happen. Mix. Didn't someone review something from Mixer? Um, yes, I think there was something else. Um, I think Craig recently looked at those. Ah, yes, they're the ones. From the same people. No, I almost said a name rang a bell and I couldn't think why. Um, but getting back to the AirPods thing, they are yeah. way, 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 way too expensive. Um, also, the risk of losing them. Mm. But Spigen have come up with an answer, so that was a, that was a swift transition. Anyone think I was getting professional now? So they've released a AirPod strap, and mm. it is exactly what it says. It's and it's only something like ten dollars, so peanuts money. Yeah, only ten dollars. How much do you think it cost them to make? Yeah, like only ten dollars. So that means a markup of nine dollars ninety-eight cents. It's nine dollars ninety-nine cents on. Okay, sorry, a markup of nine dollars and ninety-seven cents. <laughs> yeah. So it, all it is, it's literally just two clips and a neckband. It's a neckband with two clips on it. Yeah. Which is a good thing. But it then leads to the question, if you have to have something like that with some ear pods, AirPods, whatever, that would make it a hundred and what seventy dollars just to get a usable set. Mm. Um but no folks, there's no word on it, it's not on the UK store yet. So I'd imagine once it hit it'd be Tenner, eleven pounds possibly. Uh, so scrapping and getting rid of all the iPhone news. Um, bit of backstory: the Note Seven, uh, the batteries in that were known to be exploding. I could well, I don't think so much exploding. exploding. That's what I was thinking when it catching it, fire. They, they, they yeah, they they uh, catch fire and burn vigorously. Yes, yeah, so. Um, that's that feels like a really old, really old news when realistically it was only just before EFA. Um, but no, yeah, that's... it kind of it started kind of creeping out as as uh, more rumor than anything. Um, but since then, it seems a couple more have uh, have gone up. I think this is um, like thirty five now in total have gone up. And I would like to know how many of those were uh, deliberately provoked. Not that it should happen at all. Um, no. But From what I can understand, it was something to do with the way the positive and negative of the cells are made. It gets hot and it then they obviously sort and catch fire. But they are offering, this is what I do like, they are offering a free, well, they're doing a recall anyway. So you are sending the phone back and they are sending you a replacement free of charge. And apparently, there's been a couple of retailers have been saying, uh, don't send your old one back, we'll send you a new one. Mm. Which is kind of concerning in the fact of, yes, okay, they're sending you a replacement, but they're not taking the old ones away. Yeah, I know. I, I, that seems uh, perhaps... A misunderstood. I mean, maybe it's that Samsung are, are sending you the, the replacement out so you're not without a phone for a while, but I'm sure they would still want these back because if the only thing that's wrong with them is the battery, battery, how I mean, it would be ridiculously All they're doing is Samsung cracking them open, putting different batteries. Yeah, with that, with the defective so battery. Refurb. Yeah. All it is a refurbishment. So I can't understand. That's a, what I've been hearing. Uh, I've not looked into it because. Quite frankly, I don't own a Note 7. I don't want a Note 7. I don't really care. 
Mm. Um, but the cut running joke at Ether was, um, and I did see this a couple of places, people were sleeping with fire extinguishers next to their bed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is, I think, journals, journalists kind of making a real story out of this because it, this, is, this is the sort of thing that can make it to the mainstream news. Yeah, and I believe it has a couple of times. But if they're obviously Samsung are urging everyone to send back their faulty units, and interestingly, people aren't, um, which I find bizarre. The fact that they are offering a free battery refurb, or they're actually replacing it, and then they'll sell them off as refurbs. They are looking to push out a up software update, which will cap the battery charge limit to sixty percent. Yeah, that seems a really bizarre story. I can't, I can kind well, I gather that that is only for South Korean models. It's currently going to South Korean models. And apparently, what I've heard and looking around, it is planning on coming to every model. But the Korea, South Korean models are hit, getting it first which is kind of obvious considering they're a South Korean company. Um, so it's, we it says it here, a beginning to roll out on the 20th of September, which is six days away. Mm. There was also another rumor that they were going to brick the phone. So if you didn't send it back, they were going to issue a software update which would then brick the phone of some kind yeah, but that's I been that happening i at worst i could see them sending an update that essentially becomes uh like microsoft's uh pestering when the death of xp happened it will just pop up and say send us back send it back send yeah it back. They, they was taught they were going to render the phone useless in an update and they were going to force the update regardless that one has since been debunked, though. They're not doing it. They're actually just going to cap it to 60% charge. Which I can understand that should be enough to get people to start sending them back. If you're only allowing to, if you're only allowing the customer to get 60%, you, they're going to get fed up with it and end up sending it back anyway. Mm. But um, what was it? Air, air, on airplanes, they are asking that they are advising people not to charge them on airplanes yeah. um, which has been seen that there was a CNET was it a producer and editor one of the two and she actually witnessed it so it's being sorted like by no means is it not being sorted. they are sorting it but if they had left removable batteries as an option this would have been so much easier because all they would have had to do is produce new batteries, send them out to the consumer, and then go, here's a new battery, use this one, safely dispose of your old one. I mean, because that's all they're doing. They're just putting different batteries in, but they have to be put in at the warehouse. Yep, because uh, Samsung decided some time ago that it would do whatever others were doing and sealing the batteries in. If only you could just pop the back off and swap in a new battery, how much simpler and easier would that have been for absolutely everybody involved? Oh, yeah. Including Samsung. It still would have cost them a fair amount. It would have cost them the cost of a new battery and post. What's the new battery, battery like? 13, 14, 15, 20 quid at the outside. Well, that's what it costs us. Yeah. I yeah. can't imagine it costs them that. No, you're probably talking a fiver, a tenner. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so the cost of that plus posting, sure it's a cost, but it would have been significantly less. So, well, Samsung, there you go. Make your next phone have a removable battery. Yep, so that's that one sorted. So we're going to head off into the googly news. Mm. Um, so this is one I, found, I thought was quite interesting. Google will pay you $200,000 to hack a 6P and a 5X. Ben, th this is a Project Zero security contest. So yeah, which, I mean, Google and other companies paying users to find bugs is not unusual. It, no. is, it is normally what they do. Um, 
except uh, Facebook, because Facebook then tries to sue you if you point out mistakes to them. Um, so yeah, uh, why this is the amount it is? I do not know. I would have thought like 100K would have been su sufficient. Yeah, $200,000, I don't know, it seems like a strange... I think it's, like, that's just why, over 1.5K. Yeah, I mean, why 200,000? Why not make it 250? Or, you know, why not do what Google is famous for doing and picking some random mathematical constant? Who knows? Yeah, so that's a thing. There's not really anything to report there. Um, this one's more interesting. So Google's biggest Android Wear partners don't have any plans to release any new Android Wear watches this year. Mm. Now I own the Sony Smartwatch 3. I do not know where it is. Marks is on his wrist. <laughs> I've took mine on holiday and that's the last time I remember seeing it. I didn't put it on whilst I was on holiday, so it would have been in the bag. So that bag has yet been used several times. So I'm assuming it's in the big pile of crap over there. Yeah, but to be honest, I'm not uh, super surprised by this no. story um, because smartwatches, I don't think their sales have been super great. The people who wanted them have already gone and bought one. Yeah. Um, also, hardware-wise, well, you don't do a lot really on your watch. No. So I don't in the same way feel, oh, I must get the new one because the new one has faster... I mean, I would like more battery life, but otherwise... Would... Yeah, so could this end up being a somewhere I read, could this be the death of Android Wear? No, if you ask me. I agree. Um, I don't think this is their death. It's just going to be a slow year, that's all. Yeah, and I think it will become these are watches. People don't buy new watches every year or every two years. No, they buy them when they die. Simple as. Yeah, and given the, the technological aspect of these watches, well, if there is something that my, my Sony Smartwatch 3 can't do, but I want, well, I'd, I'd think about it then. But what, what, would, what would buying a new one right now offer that the, the one I've got doesn't? No. So, that's a thing. Uh, so, I've not, like I said, I've not been wearing mine, mainly due to what I, I've been working virtually every day whilst I've been off. So, what I, for the job for cleaning, and have my hands in a bucket of water, and scrubbing toilets, and stuff like that, I wouldn't want to wear the smart, a smartwatch, plain as. I want to wear a standard watch. So, Obviously, it's in turn got neglected. I did charge it. It did have a full charge before I went away. If it still got a full charge, I do not know. No, if it was switched on, it wouldn't. No, I switched it off. Okay. So it may have some charge left in it. So I'm, I'm not bothered. It, in fact, I've not missed having the watch on at all. I, it's not bothered me not having it. Then again, I've had plenty of other things to play with. So, so the Nugget update, which last time I checked, my 6P still doesn't have. I will double check it now. But it is hitting Android 1 devices. And if anybody cannot remember what Android 1 is. Yes, they, they were the cheap things that you could buy in, um, was it India and Turkey? Yeah, I couldn't understand why Turkey was on the list. I don't know. Well, I mean, I suppose Turkey is poor by European standards. I could understand India. But um, so that's starting to roll out. Yeah, although I, whilst I have no objections to Google making a point of, you know, selling these places to, you know, India and you, the Turkey and wherever, I also find it somewhat irksome that, that they just weren't allowing them, I think, to be sold elsewhere. No, I mean, I don't think they why could we not have had the um, the the Wiley? Oh shit! Was it the Wiley Fox Smart? 
whichever one was a hundred quidish one. Like, why couldn't that have been a cool one device? Yeah. Um, so that's starting to hit. Um, I think it's only hitting a couple. Of, I think it's hitting every device. I'm not um, too sure. I don't know. I don't know how many were released, obviously, because they were never coming out here. So there was a fairly limited interest level. But they do have some awesome names, like the Cherry Mobile G1. Yes, I did pick that name up. Yeah, um, the Cherry Mobile. I like the Spy Stream Uno. I like that name. <laughs> By Stream Uno, I really like that. Yeah. The uh, this is one that I find funny, the Lava Pixel V1. It, it takes me back to uh, I don't know if you remember there was um, a website that did um, a Samsung, um, not a Samsung, uh, an Android phone name generator, and it was absolutely fucking hilarious. Oh, I've heard a couple of them, and they can get quite funny. Um, but just put it in perspective, these Android One devices are not very powerful. So they're, you're talking 1.3 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, and a lot of them come in with 4 gigabytes of internal storage, which, as I've pointed out before, is kind of ridiculous. But these... And I've had Vodafone, obviously a lot of Vodafone phones had four gigs. Yeah, these were deliberately designed, I think, kind of like what Intel's strategy with the early Atom-based computers were. They are restricting, they do not want these to be... Heavily used. Good. They want, to what I can understand, four gigs storage is like you install Facebook, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. And that's it, it's gone. And a, probably a music, a street, Spotify or something. Yeah, because that's what you're going to be doing if you're poor in a poor country and buying a poor person's phone. You're going to be streaming. You're not going to be using your music. No. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. Like I said, the UK's never had Android One, so we don't know. Um, but whilst we're on the Google services, so Santander, NatWest, and Royal Bank of Scotland. Oh, I f already thought the Royal Bank of Scotland was part of Android Pay. Um, not that I'm aware of, no. Um, Santander is different from uh, the RBS group, which contains RBS and NatWest, those two being the most recognisable of their brand names. Although um, I think they still own things like Coots. But I suspect Coots users are not using Android Pay. Um, maybe their staff uses it, but, but not so much them. Um, but yeah, this is nice to see, um, I think, is it the last of the big four high street banks? Yes, because San, uh, NatWet, no, not that. Nationwide I know, had it. Yeah, they're not one of the big ones. Um, Halifax, that's they are, Yeah, the HBOS is, well, I suppose HBOS used to be number five, but Lloyd's, Lloyd's Banking Group is one of the big four. Um, then you Who have- actually um, owns Halifax? At uh, Lloyd's. I thought it was the Royal Bank of Scotland that owned them. No. Royal Bank of Scotland bought NatWest. Oh. Yeah. I knew then, one was owned. I can't remember which. Because Halifax has had it for a while. I think Halifax was one of the first. Yeah. Halifax merged with Bank of Scotland, although in effect it was essentially Halifax taken for Bank of Scotland, but for um, legal uh, reasons. It was essentially a merger, and technically, the bank of Scotland took it over so that they could continue to uh, print banknotes. Um, and then, in the financial crisis, where um, uh, various companies were uh, up shit creek, uh, HBOS was essentially offered up to Lloyd's, and the the government essentially ordered Lloyd's to buy them. Um, so. Uh, they, they are a subsidiary of the Lloyds Banking Group. Ah, uh, see, I've gone on to the Android Pay website for the the UK one, and it's got Bank Scotland, First Direct, Halifax, HSBC, Lloyds, M and S, MBNA, Nationwide, NatWest, Royal Bank of Scotland, Santander. I b believe it's pronounced Ulster Bank. So e Ulster, U yeah, that's the one. 
yeah, as that, no. that that thing in Northern Ireland. Yeah, and um, TSB it does. State yeah, Ulster Bank to... also is a um, RBS Group subsidiary because it was a, a, a subsidiary of NatWest. Okay, but um, it does state TSB coming soon, and if I'm not mistaken, it would literally now it's now just leaving TSB and Barclays, but. As we know, Barclays probably aren't going to support it because they're too busy fussing their own thing. Yeah, although there still are a, a myriad of other banks in the UK, um, Barclays would be the last of the big holdouts. And that's because Barclays have been pushing their own thing for some time. And it's not really taken off. No, I don't think it really has. But I don't think that's so much due to Barclays. Um, I think it's due to just the general public not re tech nerds know what you know NFC and wireless paying is. Like most normal people don't yeah. really understand it. They don't understand that you could you know Barclays would sell you a little strap so you could just wave your little strap over a, a thing and it would just magically pay. Yeah, they don't understand that. No. Um... So yeah, I'll leave Mark to talk about this one because I've not read this one. It's the Google Pixel and Pixel XL, which I thought uh, when I read it at first, I found quite baffling. Well, the 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 Pixel and the Pixel XL um, are apparently going to be launching in early October, from what we've heard, and these are the Nexus replacement. Uh, Nexus is no more, or is believed to be going to be no more, and in their place will be the Pixel line. And so you've got the the Pixel, which is going to be essentially the new Nexus Five X X, uh, and the XL will be like the the newer version to replace the Six P. Um, we've got some estimated pricings as well. Um, so the blah 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 the um, the XL they suspect is going to come in at uh, uh, five hundred for the thirty two and five fifty for the sixty four, um, which I believe is essentially what the six P cost at launch. Uh, so pretty much, yeah, it was about four forty for the low for the thirty two gig model at launch. Yeah. So it's only <laughs> slightly more expensive. Yeah, um, so it seems as though the the concept of uh, you know the the cheap Nexus is with the four and the five are long behind us now. Um, so, especially with the yeah. Pixel name, I wouldn't expect cheap with the name Pixel. No, certainly everything so far with the Pixel name on it has been the expensive. Pixel C. Yeah, I mean it's well, been expensive to the point Pixel. that nobody buys them. They've been like a grand. Well, plus. yeah, I mean the, the 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 Pixel laptop Chromebook thing they did. I mean that was just crazy. that was like, that was overkill because if you don't remember that was an i five running Chrome OS. Yeah, and it was absurd money. I mean nobody outside of Google got one of those. Um, yeah, so so this is all. Rumor basically, they they are coming, so we think. And um, the specs are all kind of reasonably good as you would expect from you know a high end phone. Um, but I suppose time will tell. Yeah, I, I, there has been rumors for a while of Google ditching the Nexus name or the Nexus brand, however you want to word it. Um, to me, this just supports that idea. That theory. Um, do I want the new phone? Not really. I mean, they're saying it's going to come from, possibly come from HTC. And I'm, well, I think the, the the rumors are one of them is going to be HTC and one of them is going to be LG. But there doesn't seem to be a great deal of clarity as to which one's what. I would expect the LG that that LG would have the Pixel. And HTC to have the Pixel XL, just because when you think about it, Huawei had the P, had the six P, LG had the five X. 
and LG obviously prior to that had the five. Mm. So f following the track pattern, I'd expect LG to have the smaller version. Mm. But, but then again, LG might have said, no, we, we made the small one last time and nobody bought it. So we want the big one this time. We want the big one, possibly. So the last news is the Amazon to bring Alexa to the UK. Yeah. So <laughs> this is kind quite of excited about that. Well, well, this, I think, is kind of fun. I mean, I kind of want one of these, although uh, sure as fuck not buying one. Um, but, yeah, I remember uh, March of the Droids. Not like this year, March of the Droids. Um, or was it? It was this year. We're still in 2016. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, somebody so, brought one along. Somebody, you know, somebody had uh, had an American friend uh, buy one and, you know, send them it. So if you did that, uh, it kind of worked in the UK, although it was very limited in what it could do because most of what Alexa can do um, requires uh, partner services which obviously don't exist in the UK. And the unofficial commentary we had from Amazon was that was the reason it hadn't been brought to the UK. It was, obviously it wasn't a hardware issue or anything or a language issue. It was they didn't have uh, UK partner company deals in place. Um, whereas so in the US, you can um, have uh, Alexa, order you uh, a cab or order you a pizza or, you know, do a variety of bunch of different things. Yeah, so it's now coming to the UK. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not interested. I think you would be. If, if Amazon sent us one, uh, I think you would like it. Mm, possibly. It's just um, putting it somewhere, though, somewhere sensible. Well, uh, this is the thing. I mean, one of the things, um, oh, by the way, uh, if you are a Prime member, Amazon is knocking, I think, 50 quid off the yeah. um, Amazon, the, the full sized Echo, taking it from 150 quid to 100. Which so, does actually sound, when you put it down to 100 pounds, is quite compelling. To a point. But the one that's I th also really interesting, they make the Echo Dot. Oh, yes, the one that you're supposed to connect to an external speaker, but you yeah. can get away with not connecting it to an external speaker. Yeah, it's 50 quid, and so, so not so bad. However, Amazon, I believe, also sells them in a 6-pack or a 12-pack. So the idea being, you buy a 12-pack and you stick them in every room in the house. The only though there's a video I saw of someone that, and they had a full size Echo and an Echo Dot. They had the Echo in the kitchen, mm. logic, and they had the Echo Dot in their bedroom. Mm. And what they found would obviously they were in a, a flat apartment because it was America. What they kept finding was that both of them would then pick up the same command at the same time right so to have a 12 pack you'd have to have a very big house well yeah i mean a 12 pack you know you're talking 12 rooms um but it's i i find it interesting that amazon are selling them in that format you know the the intention from their selling that many is you don't buy one of these you don't it you know it's not um you know like your phone where you have one or you know your main tv where you have one this is uh you have them everywhere yeah which i find slightly um slightly concerning why would you want them everywhere listening to you all the time well because you can have them do things um, yes. There are various plugins you could have them, you know, control your lights. Um, you know, if you had motorized curtains, you could have them control that. You know, things like that. It's the idea I think with this is where it's veering towards uh, Star Trek. 
This is you you tell your you tell the computer turn the lights up, turn the lights down, play some of this. Mm. But uh, it's a, it's a thing. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not. It took its time to get here. I, I will give it that. Uh, it's been out for a year. It feels like a year. Yeah, it's taken a while, but I mean, the the word that we had from from Amazon it was because Amazon didn't have in place, uh, you know, the the deals and uh, connections to UK companies, which yeah, I mean, it's quite believable. It like it's kind of believable, but it's also well, why not just tell us the fucking thing and let us decide. If the fact that we can't buy a pizza from Domino's is a problem or not. Yeah. Um, so that is the news. I mean, we've done quite well time-wise. I mean, we've been going for, what, 45 minutes? Um, yes, so it's not, not going to be as long as the last one we did, which was well into an hour and 15 Yeah, minutes. well, we, ha we haven't totally finished yet. So, you know, touch wood desk is what it'll do so i'm going to move on to the devices we have um i believe i've closed the wrong tab i believe we mentioned that dom had the honor eight um he's also brought a case from i forgot to write this one down some yeah. therapy yeah I don't know what case he's brought or for what phone, but uh, I know he should, he will be reviewing it. Um, we've got... Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm going to go by the name Terrapin, but maybe this is like some kind of waterproof thing. Yes, I would. Guess one would assume that. Um, so Jeffrey's got the X-Torm. I would say X-Torm, not X-Storm. Uh, power bank. I think it's a 10,000 or 15,000. It's not huge. And I don't know how you pronounce this, but the Elker, L K E R headphones. I don't, never heard of them. Don't even have to Bluetooth, don't have to wired. Um, I've obviously got these that I mentioned earlier the uh, South Bay Y, so it's S A V F Y. Um, I can't remember the exact product name and the boxes in the pile of boxes over there. Um, these are obviously Bluetooth earbuds, as I mentioned earlier. That if anybody remembers the LG tones, this is basically a knockoff for them, which at first I thought was a stupid idea. But, but excuse me, like I said earlier. The more I've used them, the more I've become to like them. I've also got down my in my little stash um, the Vodafone huh, Tab Prime Seven, which is basically a giant, <laughs> and I use giant heavily, which I've also got turned off. Uh, ten ten point one inch Android tablet. And if you would say to me, would I, what do I think of 10.1 inch Android tablets? I would literally turn around and say they are too big. Um, Android, it was nowhere near made for 10.1 inch tablets. Well, it used to be. Used to be, yeah. That's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, until until Google decided that it would remove the tablet UI options. I mean, eight inch would be fine for stock because it. it Every Vodafone phone is near near stock Android. It's not stock Android. It's got a few tweaks to it, but it's close enough to stock Android. Um, it just feels too big. And I'll admit, it did have me sold a lot because I don't know how well this will pick up. But you should be able to see just down here. You might not see because of the lighting. But it does have front-firing speakers. Um, the only thing is, they're not very good. They're loud, they just cause the whole back, you can feel it vibrating across the back. I'm not surprised cuts have to be made with provider phones and stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, it comes in just under £200, I think. 
I've not been able to find an accurate price to try and sell it, obviously, on a pay monthly thing. And I also have the Vodafone Turbo 7, which it just follows the line of every smart thing from Vodafone in the phone department. And I'm not really sold by it. It's just, it's eight gigs of, eight gigs of internal memory. I think it's one or two gigabytes of RAM. And yes, it should sound okay and it should be okay to use. But if I'm being honest, I've had to turn the animations off altogether. Like normally I just go at developer options 0.5 and that, that will go happy. But at 0.5, this thing still feels clunky. Mm. And at zero so turning them off altogether i hate to say it but it still feels clunky um and if i'm not mistaken i believe it is a hundred pounds so like i said in the smart ultra 7 review i would still lean towards the Prime 7? I can't, can't be right. The £75 one that I had. I, I've much favoured this. And the other quick thing is these buttons. They are... Uh, there we go. They are mussy as anything. And if you look... If, well, that's probably a better way to hold it. But it's volume rocker, lock button. I complained on some phone... I complained on a phone at the volume rocker was too high now the power button's too high and these are mushy mm. um, yeah although that layout that's the same layout as sony's using for uh, theirs which i personally i do find it strange having the power and the volume at the same. i mean the 6p is obviously the same and you can clearly see it because of the case but you look at the size of the 6p this is halfway up this is not a problem this is all the way up at the top. And the 6P also has, I don't know how well it will show, but it has a little pattern of some kind on that's not showing very well. But if you look online, you'll see some good quality photos. And you can clearly distinguish the two. You cannot distinguish the buttons on this. And once again, it just doesn't feel like a, a worthy. I wouldn't buy one. So, game reviews should be coming in the order I've shown them. I think that I've obviously got a couple of miscellaneous bits and pieces, but I'm obviously in no rush to review these. Obviously, the Vodafone stuff's got to go back uh, tomorrow or to, was it Friday? I can't remember. And I hopefully, after that, should grab my hands on the Platinum 7, which has been out for quite a while. I just never got to get to one. But uh, I'm going to pass it to Mark and uh, wait and uh, see what his never-ending pile is going to reveal to us. Um, well, uh, unsurprisingly, it's kind of audio-based. Um, a couple of things that are no longer in my presence um, that I've, I've got the reviews sort of ready to go. Um, there was the Yamaha WC030 uh, speaker. Um, so that was kind of fun to play with. Although, oh God, do they overdo the bass on that. I mean, that seems to be a common thing lately is people over, companies overdoing the bass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's appealing to chavs and retards um, where <laughs> they're, they equate more bass means better. No, no, it doesn't. Um, I mean, it just doesn't, right? It, it, fucking idiots. Uh, but, you know, it's the same people that would put, you know, like, you know, five or six sugars in a cup of coffee. It's like, just, why? Why would you do that? Um, you know, if that's just don't don't have coffee, but uh, so there's that. There was also uh, the partnering AV receiver, the Yamaha. Blah, was it the RCX six hundred one? Oh, I forget. Um, yeah, I mean, 
so, some of these things from Yamaha, they have really, really catchy names, um, but really good product. I really like that. Um, although I did dislike that yeah, it sounded significantly better than the receiver I own myself, um, which prior to having that, I was perfectly happy with. And now I'm listen to mine and think oh, it's a bit shit no, no, no. <laughs> I um, want that one yeah it's like oh, I want the other one back um, but yeah so so those are, should be coming fairly soon um, other random bits and pieces of things that are coming uh, review wise um, we have some earphones from one more and these have the it's either the best name or worst name ever in the world. Go on. They are triple driver in ear headphones. Triple. That's their name. Oh, I, I don't gosh. know how well this will come across. Um, triple. Yeah, it comes up across perfectly fine. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's their name. That's what they're called. So, yeah. Um, I also have uh, another sort of little speaker thing from LG, which is the LG Music Flow. I think Music Flow P7. So there's that. Oh, um, we also have uh, some earphones from Mies. We have. Uh, another speaker thing from uh, Bluedio, and they very kindly um, sent me the black and silver one. Are they the ones that sent you the Bluetooth speaker and then for the extra five pounds had the Wi Fi version? Yeah, and there is the silver one, although that was heavy because it's still in their box. But yes, yes, they were the people that sent. Sorry, and there is one of the, uh, which is, are they just not the bizarrest kind of funky looking things ever? What I want to know, what was the designer taking? I don't know. The day he designed I, that. I, I mean, okay, the, the front, okay, it's maybe not the most subtle thing in the world, but I mean, That's it is funny. different. It is, it is weird. I mean, I like that. It's, you know, that was why I said, uh, Basically, they asked me what color, and I couldn't quite decide between the black and silver and the silver. So I asked if they would send both, and they kindly said, yeah, okay. So I have both. Um, and if you were talking about, where's the other one? Nope. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the, I mean, this we, I, I reviewed the other week. Um, I think this is the Bluetooth only one, and the other one is floating around. How did you get on with that Wi-Fi one? Could you? Um, well, initially, I had ping. <laughs> By the way, the review is up, so it's nice to see you, you bother to read it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that much, stuff, that much stuff comes out of Mark. You kind of lose track on what product numbers are which. If I see yeah. super looks, hell yeah, I'm reading them. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the Bluetoothy one, the, it's the AS, is the, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth one. The ASBT is the Bluetooth only one. And which makes sense. They are, they look the exact same. I mean, they look exactly the same. They sound the exact same. But for the extra fiver, buy the Wi Fi one. Although, I did find it to be um, troublesome. Frust frustrating when setting it up. Um, essentially, you have to do it slowly. When it changes mode, it's like the, the the light may change, but it seems to take a minute or so for it to actually do it. I, I remember you saying you were having problems with it, and then that was the last I ever kind of heard of it. Yeah. Um, essentially, I contacted the, the people over at Blue Deer, um and said, look, 
I'm having problems with it. Uh, it's not it's not resetting, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so very kindly, um, the, the lady whose name, of course, I now can't remember, is it Jasmine? Jasmine, I think, uh, made a little video showing, you know, doing it. And so I did it at the exact same slow pace where you change the settings, you know, you hold the two buttons and, and then you wait a moment or so and then, you know, you just do it in a very slow, very relaxed. And since having done that and setting it up, it totally works fine. It works fine over AirPlay. Um, yeah, I just pulled the review up and see, I've seen it working over AirPlay. Yeah, and for a fiver over the Bluetooth one, why would you buy the Bluetooth one? Don't buy the Bluetooth one. Buy the other one. Uh, I mean, it also acts as, you know, a, a Wi-Fi repeater. <laughs> right? I mean, it acts as a Wi-Fi repeater. You know, you can connect to it as a, a wireless hotspot. Um, and, you know, use, you know, a, at a further distance uh, from your, your normal router. But in all fairness... So, like, I... Why would you not buy it? I've come to the conclusion of wireless repeaters are a waste of time. Um, they can be in many circumstances. But yeah, mm -hmm. I came to that conclusion. To me, the best bet is just to get, and this is kind of plugging an article I wrote a while back, it's just get some Ethernet cable and an old router to, and use it as an access point. To me, that makes more sense and by far is cheaper than buying a dedicated Wi-Fi extender. It can be, um, but this is it, not really a dedicated Wi-Fi extender. It's spend an extra fiver. And have the functionality if needed. Yeah, and it's not just for that fiver. You just get the the, the Wi-Fi extender. You also get the AirPlay abilities. Yeah, I could kind of see why people would want that. Uh, uh, yeah, if you, if you live in YouTube, I mean, I... Um, normally have a setup where I have an Apple Airport Express um, that I essentially um, I listen to podcasts in the bathroom so I have that transmitting off away to the bathroom uh, where there is a speaker from a wire being fed under the door um, and in so rather than doing all that, you know, you could have your, your speaker, which is, uh, you know, not this one, but, you know, it's portable. It, you, you know, it has its own battery. You just connect it. You bring it in. You plonk it, you know, on the back of the, the, the um, cistern or wherever. And there you go. Yeah. So that's that. Wow, I just realized how dark it's gotten. I've just looked in my window and I can see how in the roof. Off the welcome, I can see how dark it is outside. Yes, winter um, is coming. Yes, which means everybody that walks outside my window can clearly see what I'm doing on the computer because the lamp's on. Well, that, that'll teach you to sit and look at porn whilst you're podcasting. <laughs> so, I believe that is it. We've gone just over an hour. I think Mark needs some WD-40 for his chair. Yeah, yeah, sorry, the cheer speaks. Oh, also, I just suddenly thought there's another thing which um, may not get reviewed, but I, I won a pair of headphones. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember that, actually. And, uh, and that. That appears to be some sort of amp. Yeah, it's a little uh, USB amp and that. Um, the Apogee Groove. What a weird name. Yeah. I don't know if it's me, but has anyone else noticed how the fact that audio companies have weird names and weird number item, item numbers, product numbers? Which one would be the correct one to use there? Um, well, I suppose. I think, um, yeah, the numbers have been used for a long time with these things. Uh, you know, because otherwise, if you're using real words, you run out. Plus, remember, a lot of these things are coming out from new uh, companies in China. True, true, true. Where they like to give strange back to front, where 
the lower the number means the higher the model which is really great until you do what Hi-Fi Man did some time back and, and have the RE0 and then have like, what's the next? Oh shit, we've... <laughs> <laughs> so there, were, there was a product which for a good long time was, uh, we were all unofficially calling the RE-1. <laughs> oh, it sounds like something would, that sounds like something that would only come out of China. Kind of. I mean, that's uh, the the product itself is eventually called the RE two five two. Where that number came from, no idea. Um, but yeah, it was kind of quite amusing because we, we we didn't have an official name for it, and because their sequence of progressing in quality was the lower the number, <laughs> and once you've got to the the zero, as the number zero. They then launched a tweaked version, which was zero in letters. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the, the RE minus one, which, you know, it, it was entertaining for a little while. So we'll round it off because we're an hour, an hour and five. So you can find us all over the internet. So the website is, of course, www.mobiletechtalk.co.uk. Twitter is obviously at MTT feed. Uh, Instagram is Mobile Tech Talk. Uh, Facebook is Mobile Tech Talk UK. YouTube and Google Plus. Heck, yeah. just, you know, or, you know you the can drill. just entirely forget all of those and just Google Mobile Tech Talk. Because yeah. let's face it, nobody actually, when was the last time anybody typed an actual URL? <laughs> you no, know, I have it on bookmarks. <laughs> just, well, yeah, but I mean, have you? when was the last time you actually typed a URL for anything? Uh... Today, when I was accessing a dedicated page on the college website, it had to, you had to go to that page, and for some reason or other, they did not have a button anywhere near so you. you typed down a whole URL. Yeah, they literally went. Here's it. They literally went. Here's the URL. Wrote, wrote it on the whiteboard. Go to it. Right. Why they couldn't just say, "Here's the URL," and or here's the short code. Yeah, why they didn't put it down to a um, short link, I'll never know. But that's what they did. Uh, and then obviously Patreon is the site that we're trying to get some help with running. So basically, you give us some money, we make some better shit, uh, as Dom likes to say. And I, that's it. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing left to say. We've covered everything. We should, touch wood, be back next week. Uh, obviously, minus Dom, but we may drag someone else in. Yes, we'll try and see if we can uh, cajole slash bully Craig into to to being available. Or well, if you've got any, this is this thing I don't think Dom's asked yet. If you've got anyone that you would like us to have on the podcast, uh, let us know. Uh, yes, I, I think what you mean by that is as a, a guest star. As a guest, yeah, as a, as a guest to come on. Once, once, twice, who knows? Could be multiple times. Let us know. Tweet us. Or we'll see what thing they can do. Tweet us. Tweet us. <laughs> I mean, you could email us. Everyone's email is their name at mobiletechtalk.co.uk. So you can do that. Um, but no, it'd be, be interesting to get some different people on because initially when we had Kurt, Kurt on, he was from Eurotech at the time. I think we've had a couple. We've had a couple of special uh, tell me mores that Dom does. A little plug there, but no, it'd be nice to have someone else, someone different, on the the news and see and get their opinions on stuff. So if you have anyone, let us know. We can't promise them. We can't promise they'll be there, but you can certainly let us know, and we can try our very best to sweet talk them. What with yeah. I do not know. Probably tell them you can drink. On the podcast, <laughs> but I remember that got Michael. That made Michael Fisher very happy. Uh, we'll find out he could drink and curse on the podcast. He was very, very happy about that. But no, now we're coming up to an hour and ten minutes. So I've been Chris. That's been Mark, and we shall be back next week, hopefully. Toodles. Bye. <laughs>